Oh, here we go. Mmm. Yeah. Feels good. That's one thing with this presentation, they do not drop it. They keep it in their mouth. If you let them have it too long, they're gonna swallow it. Pretty little guy. Not a jumbo, but a pretty good tussle on spinning gear. And you can kind of get an idea what I'm using. <sighs> Slid up the line a little bit. Crayfish, Yamamoto Psycho Dad, little floating craws, VMC Half Moon Nail Weight. And like I said, if you let them eat it too long, especially with a, a Yamamoto, a Senko, or a salt impregnated plastic, they will eat it. I'm gonna put the pliers on this guy. A little hook reversal there. Decent little chunk. So as I was saying, here's the setup. This is a Yamamoto Psycho Dad. I got a nail weight, Nico hook on, a Neko hook, whatever you want to call it, and an O-ring. So instead of a worm, what I've opted to do is take a crayfish profile, and I kind of came up with this system, started experimenting with it, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have too. A few years ago, I was on a really clear body of water, fishing a drop shot, and I knew I, knew I was on a big load of smallmouth bass and they wouldn't eat it. So I put a nail weight in a little crayfish profile like this, and I had the O-ring and I started catching fish. They wanted something on bottom, but I think even more over, the bait's pulling backwards exactly like a real crayfish. So if you wanna talk about replicating something that they're actually eating, why wouldn't you grab a creature bait or grab, you know, specifically a crayfish plastic and just Nico rig it. VMC Nico hook right there, eight pound fluorocarbon line, eight pound braid, and I have an O-ring on there and I'm just dragging that across the bottom. That lead nail weight's transmitting that bottom composition in my hands and I just wait for the pickup. But that's a cool thing about the Psycho Dad is with you know air injected into these claws, you have some buoyancy. So instead of the bait falling flat, falling over when it's not under tension, you know, you can kind of go semi-slack on it and know that those claws are still up there in that defensive position. And this bait's about the right size crayfish that bass like to eat. And get those jump, those giant baits sometimes are a little spooked when they're staring down claws. This one's about the right size morsel for both largemouth and smallmouth. So Green pumpkin, red fleck. Let's see if we can get another one. He likes what he's got in his mouth. Nice fish, that's the one we were looking for. Folks. Fun, fun, fun. I mean, I'd rather fish with casting gear and heavy equipment, but day in, day out when the bite is such where you're not getting bit, you just put on this and you can, you can catch some fish. You're gonna, you're gonna catch them if they're around. a nice one and again with that neck hook I mean right down there in the mouth the bait was in the mouth his mouth was closed he was eating the bait and I just kind of real set him so it's just a really really high percentage hooker So we caught three fish. I was downwind casting up the, the edge of this little structure here, and I think we tuned them up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is just change my casting angle with this Neko rig. Same thing I'd do with the crankbait. So I hit spot lock. If you look up my map, we're now on the tip of it. We're on the upwind side, and I'm just gonna use the wind and fire down the edge. And then I'll just cast off the back of the boat. That's one of the nice things about spot lock. So right on down the edge, that's the edge of my drop off. We custom map this spot. Uh, we're looking at side imaging at the same time. It's got good boulders on it. It's got a good rock edge just off the edge of that outer weed line. And that's kind of where we're fishing this bait today. Just dragging it. I don't need to be putting a lot of pops and action in there because you can see from the underwater, it's just by dragging it over the cover, it puts a ton of action into those little floating craws. It's a more natural presentation that way than if I was like hopping it and, and jerking it. Mm, that's a Perfect example of that real set. This fish is in cover, so I better, I gotta get them up a little bit. And that's one thing to keep in mind. If you're fishing mixed cover like I am, there's pretty good grass down there. You can you can undergun on this on this Nico system. You can see I'm fighting it a little bit. That that fish turned on me and got in the cover. So I kind of favor more of your shaky head rod, more of a medium power. This is Mega Bass's shaky, uh, you know, shaky head rod. So I'm upsizing from a medium light, you know, 
which would work in a lot of scenarios to a rod with just a little bit more horsepower. But in that case, it helped me get this guy out of the grass. And he's, he's got her down the hatch. We'll grab the pliers on him, but decent fish. All right, guys, you can see what happened there. That fish ate that bait. I can get that fish unhooked pretty easily though. The key is having a needle nose pliers and going up through the gill, and I'll show you how that goes. Grab the shank of the hook and roll it the opposite way of the hook point. So in this case, the hook point's toward the top of the mouth. Just gonna roll that hook back. And look at that, hook popped right out. So by doing that, I just put leverage on the backside of that shank of the hook and that barb didn't have any purchase. And there's no bleeding. I can release that fish as good as it, if it had been hooked up here. You know, a lot of fish die. People will cut the hook off or they'll rip the gullet thinking that the fish is, you know, that's what I have to do. But just do that little hook reversal technique and, you know, you can let this guy keep growing. Nice bass.